Well, hi kids. It's the first week of September 2023 and a lot of new features were added to Draw Things in the last two updates. Draw Things is the stable diffusion client for iOS and Mac. It's free from the App Store and runs on Apple Silicon. Now the biggest feature is that Draw Things now has an HTTP server. That means Draw Things can be controlled from an outside source through API controls protocols on the same computer or over your network. If you're an app developer making a custom interface or maybe you want to render in Stable Diffusion from another application, it's now possible with Draw Things through this HTTP API. And I've seen screenshots of a few different web UI in progress from different devs in the community, creating interfaces similar to Automatic 1111. So in the very near future, you'll probably be able to trigger draw things, uh, a render on your Mac from a web UI on your phone or, you know, any other remote interface that you can come up with. Now let's move on to the re uh, related feature, my favorite new feature, which is scripting inside Draw Things with JavaScript presets. Now this is similar to the API, except it's all internal to Draw Things, and the idea is to automate tasks like loading your favorite model and LoRa combinations, setting up the image sizes and noise settings, and rendering a series of images with specific settings so that you can compare the output. Now, this video is not a scripting tutorial. You do need to know some basic JavaScript to write your own presets, but the community has already stepped in with useful scripts you can try and adapt. I'll show you two scripts that I've uploaded to the Draw Things community Discord. Now, the first script is my pulp novel generator, which you can download from Draw Things uh, Discord server. Now, instead of hitting generate, you'll open the presets menu and select the pulp novel generator this is intended to be a fun celebration of mid 20th century crime and sleaze novels and especially the artists who illustrated them with you know so much style and drama the script will randomly generate prompts with a made-up book title as illustrated by one of the 128 artists who were real artists of the time and the genre that should already be well represented in any stable diffusion model. So I deliberately made the prompts a little provocative but also a bit vague. So Draw Things will give us an image mostly pulled from that artist's style, including their composition and, you know, their usual subjects. Of course, the prompt does add silly stuff to the render, and these titles are completely bogus, so this isn't, you know, some highbrow art lecture. You'll see a lot of gangsters and burlesque strippers and men in trench coats and overly passionate housewives. <laughs> it's pretty campy. I'd love to see more of these cultural remixes. Maybe you'll adapt my script to make something fun. I don't know, sci-fi movie posters from the 70s, who knows. But also the script sometimes does give me these interesting abstractions and very stylized, uh, you know, painterly looks, maybe something for your mood board, and sometimes just great implied storytelling. I would totally read this graphic novel about this immigrant community in the style of Margaret Brundage. It's kind of so above and extra beyond what I expected from this sort of thing. So obviously if you see an image that you like, you can click the thumbnail to load the prompt into Draw Things and then you can take it from there. I saw this amazing Femme Fatale hair by Brothers Hildebrandt, so you know I stole that and I put that prompt on my own Laura character in this retro style. Now the installation is a little wonky at the moment. This is expected to improve. Uh, on the Mac, download the JavaScript from the Discord and add the file pulpnoveljenerator.js to the folder Users, your username, Libraries, Containers, Draw Things, Data, Scripts. And it will then show in the Presets menu with the other scripts, and you might need to relaunch Draw Things, I'm not sure. Now another method to add the script at the moment is to copy the script to your device's clipboard and open the presets menu and draw things. Now you click Manage Scripts and add a new script. 
Name it Pulp Novel Generator, or whatever your script is. And you're going to paste the script from clipboard into this scripting area. You should see the text change to coding colors. And then you'll hit save and exit this menu with the small x up in the top right. Now if you're using SDXL, I've added my presets. Just uncomment the SDXL parameters at the top of the script. These were the parameters that I found that looked best. And by the way, if you want to make a preset of your favorite render settings, you can start here with this template. Uh, I think the best way to learn scripting is to, you know, hack other people's code and, and hijack their scripts for your own purposes. But I definitely recommend joining the Draw Things Discord because there are a lot of other people there sharing their scripts and functions too. And it's a pretty chill community. Now the second script I'll show is my wildcard script and the idea here is to write alternate text inside the prompt using a simple markdown. Curly brackets creates a wildcard and you can put a list of things inside, each separated by a vertical bar. And as many wildcards inside your prompt as you want. And again, instead of generate, you'll use the presets menu and click on the wildcard script. Draw Things will render a batch of images, and each render will then have a different prompt replacing the wildcards with one item from the lists. Be sure to save your wildcard prompt before using the preset because the renders won't have the full list in their prompt. They'll only have, you know, the one random item from each wildcard list that was picked. Now, a couple of variations on this script are also on the Discord uh, by other people. One cycles each item in the list one by one. You can imagine how that would be really useful as the start of an XY plot or an XYZ plot. While another script uses tags, so the wildcard is, you know, a long inventory list somewhere inside the script, not in the prompt. Similar to how I did my pulp novel generator. Now, I don't want a list of 128 random artists inside the prompt. That's a bit much to keep track of and to edit. Uh, the small wildcards is a great way to try different prompt ideas. But honestly, I like the freestyle random wildcards that can be used right in the prompt because it's not just, you know, an inventory of objects and colors. It's any part of speech that you want to vary in the prompt. It's the subjects, the backgrounds, the mood lighting, the color palette. It's the expressions on their faces and it's the actions they're doing in the scene. It's any slice of life you can think of in the moment and a very freeform way to cover a lot of ground and discover those happy accidents. But when I overdo it, my wild cards tend to get longer and longer with each item getting more and more detailed. So at some point I make, you know, it made sense to move this big prompt inside the script, especially if it's something that I'm going to use again and again. So I've added a fallback prompt at the top of the script. Uh, just copy paste your growing wildcards prompt uh, into, yeah, this one, fallback prompt. And if the script doesn't detect any wildcards in your prompt, it will fall back to this prompt instead. Now that's all I have for you today. Give me a like if you want others to be able to find this video and subscribe if you personally find any of this information useful to you. My videos are not all stable diffusion and draw things, but it's a community I'm spending time in and I love procedural generation. So this scripting tutorial is just the introduction. There's a lot more going on with scripting and the HTTP API. API. Is it API? I say API but then I feel self-conscious and I say API. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of people contributing to uh, the conversation. So I'll put links to my scripts down in the video description and a permanent invite to the Draw Things Discord if you're not already a member. You've been watching Cutscene Artist. I'm your host, Wet Circuit. I'm a terrible coder, so don't ask me to code uh, you know, don't ask me to debug your code questions in my comments. Just join the Discord and ask there where smarter people can give you better answers than I can. I will see you next time, kids. Bye!